This time on Road and Race, we hunt down the perfect second-hand Clio RS to turn into the ideal track day car. In the last episode, we went through the list of possible cars that would make a great track day car, and we chose the Renault Clio RS. In this episode, we go out and actually try to buy a good one. So just to recap, we have £4,000 as a total budget. And with this, we have to buy the Clio and then that's the money we have to spend on modifying it as well. And eventually we wanna make it the best road legal track day car we can. So that will mean upgrading things like the brakes, suspension, the engine if we can, basically the whole package. Both Gary and I kept an eye out in the usual places like eBay, Auto Trader, and Piston Heads for a few weeks, and we found this Clio RS182 for sale on Auto Trader. This is the 2 litre engine version of the Mark II Clio, producing about 180 horsepower. From the outside, it looked really good and was on sale inside our budget for about £1,000. The seller was honest and said the car had been in an accident in the past, but the damage was just cosmetic and had been repaired. As you can see from these pictures he sent, the front bonnet, rear bumper, boot lid and rear light cluster had been damaged. On the plus side, I got the feeling he had cared for the car, as he sent over this list of work he'd done, which included a new power steering pump, steering wheel, spark plugs, clutch, and he said he had all the receipts. So we decided to go and see the car. I say we, but as the car was being sold near where Gary lives, I sent him to go see it by himself. You know, I'm just far too busy and important for trivial things like that. Right guys, so here we are. And we're now sat in this car, this Clio. I've gone around the outside, I've checked out the bodywork. Now bear in mind, this car is gonna be solely for track use, so it doesn't have to be mint. We're not bothered about sort of cosmetic marks, anything like that. Um, and to be fair, it looks really good um, for its age and for the mileage it's done. It's got a few parking dents, etc. Curbing on the alloys, but they're going to be changed anyway. So all we, need, all we really need is a car that's legal, is held together reasonably tight, and has a good engine. The engine is the main factor in this, um, in this car, in this purchase. So I've checked the engine. Um, it's got a new filter. Uh, the oil looks clean on the dipstick. Doesn't appear to be any leaks um, on the engine at all. And I've looked at the history folder and it's had the cam belt and dephaser changed uh, within the last couple of thousand miles, which is very uh, good. I'll still have to worry about that in the future with receipts to prove and also receipts from um, where it's been serviced kind of every 4,000 miles. Has, there is a bit of a gap in the service history. Um, obviously, where one of the owners just hasn't documented what they've done with the car. But most recently, the past few years, it has, um, it has been looked after and it seems to be... Um, quite good from the outside so yeah so this basic now we're just going to go and take it for a drive see how it is um see if there's any concerns or see if it basically fits the bill and if we're going to be taking this car away today we're going to be buying this car so we'll have to find out now being a french car 10 years old i'm, in, I'm you know i'm going to kind of be expecting some form of electrical issue somewhere but we shall find out so let's start it up now I have had the engine running, and I've, when I've looked around it, I've been revving the engine just to make sure there's no smoke coming out of the exhaust. So yeah, seems to idle nicely. So uh, let's go for a quick spin. Now immediately, it's got an up it's got an upgraded um, cat back exhaust on it but instantly it's loud i don't know if that's going to be oh hello we've got some got the seat belt light flashing at me there even though my seat belt's on so yeah i mean it... the gearbox feels all right Sounds like the exhaust might be blowing slightly around the centre section. I did look underneath and the exhaust rubbers, they look quite worn. So we need to change those out, but we're going to be changing the whole exhaust system anyway, hopefully. It's not missing under acceleration. It's 
very loud, it is very loud. That's gonna have to be sorted. There's no wobble. Steering's kind of steering straight and true. Feels very firm, very firm ride, but it is a cup version. I think that came with um, slightly stiffer suspension. So yeah, changing gears, it's not grinding. The synchromesh seems intact. On the brakes, brakes feel good. It's had new discs and pads all round. So no concern there. Again, there's that seat belt. That could be annoying. Maybe we can disconnect that. Basically, it's a sensor. The seatbelt sensor seems to keep flashing at me, but... A few creaks and stuff in the interior, a bit rattly. But this is all probably gonna go anyway. Yeah, I'm not getting any funny noises. The steering seems quite sharp. And what I really wanna know, I wanna, I wanna sort of know how it accelerates, because this car's obviously gonna be used on track. So it's going to be getting thrashed quite a lot. So we need to see how this car accelerates and if it's actually kind of fast. Bit of squeak from the brakes there. I know these cars have got variable valve timing so they're a bit like VTEC as far as I'm aware. So when you get to a sort of a certain rev range the power kind of kicks in. It's come off a roundabout now. Let's give it a go. very nicely five thousand revs and then the the um, the, kind of, the power kind of kicks in it's quite strange it's a bit like you have a turbo and the boost comes in but no it feels very good very encouraging see so yeah, I think this is going to kind of do the intended job. I think it's going to be a good car on track. It feels very pokey. It's, it's a tiny car. Very, very small compared to modern day cars. And it's just going to be nice to be able to throw this around. Once we get some interior stripped out, I think it's going to be good fun. So, I'm going to quickly pull over. Just have a look around outside again. Just make sure everything's working. And then I think I'm going to make an offer. So guys, do you want the good news or the good news? Well, this car was up for a thousand pounds. After driving it around a little bit, kind of realizing that there's not really anything wrong with the car for us. It seems to be quite um, ideal. And for the, for the money, it's very good value. I mean, most of these cars that are selling are kind of going for sort of 12 to 1500 at the cheapest. So, but anyway, enough of that jibber jabber. The good news is I stuck an offer in for 850 and he accepted it so the car is ours Woohoo! this is it we have a track car i did phone neil and he said well you know if the history's there if the engine's good if you're happy with it then you go ahead and make the decision so i decided to stick an offer in and now we are the proud owners so yeah need to go and show it to neil really see what his reaction is get him to have a drive in it as well um hopefully i've made the right decision touch wood I'm sure he's going to uh, be happy with this because I, I think it's a bit of a steal really. And then we shall see what happens in the future when you get this out on a track and um, then decide what modifications we are going to do next. So other than needing new, hear new, new ears because of the loud exhaust, it's all good. So we have a Clio. I have not actually seen the car yet. So in the next episode, Gary will be showing me around and we'll be giving it its first run at the track. It will still be completely stock, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs. So that's it for this week. If you'd like to support the show, please uh, subscribe by clicking the logo on the right. And when the next episode is ready, you'll be able to click just here as well to watch that as well. If you'd like any bonus content, then please check the description box for the links to our social media pages. And as always, thank you for watching.